Good morning, Kalimera. Both the epistle lesson and the gospel lesson have contrasts today. In the epistle lesson to the Corinthians, St. Paul talks about the contrast between the flesh and the spirit that there are many things that are created in the world, like animals, like birds, like fish, like celestial bodies, meaning the stars, terrestrial bodies, the land. But there is one that has the greater glory than all these created things, and that is the human being. Because the human being has a spirit, and the spirit of the human being can live forever. And there's a certain glory that St. Paul says we can have in our temporal, earthly life. But there is a greater glory that is for those who believe in God when this life is over. There is a greater glory. And then he contrasts, finally, Adam, the first man who had glory because he was a living being. But his glory was, was shattered when he sinned against God. So Adam has the material glory of all the things that we see made. But the last Adam, meaning Christ, became the greatest glory. Because Christ rose from the dead, and those who are like Christ, more so than like Adam, will have the greater glory, meaning everlasting life. And in the Gospel lesson, we meet a man named Levi, whose other name was Matthew. So this, this story is told in both the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of Luke. Levi was, he had two surnames, Matthew and Levi. So this is really Matthew, who became the apostle and the evangelist. And Matthew started off his life as a tax collector. And tax collectors, by their very profession then, hopefully not so much now, they were dishonest people. They were going and they were arbitrarily collecting what they thought was your fair share of taxes. And Matthew was sitting at the tax office and Jesus went up to Matthew and he said, Matthew, you follow me. Now there were scribes and Pharisees sitting nearby, ostensibly righteous people, and they took offense that Jesus went to Matthew and said, you are going to follow me. He didn't go to the, the leaders of the temple and say, you follow me. He went to the unrighteous, sinful Matthew. And Matthew, we are told, left everything and followed him. He left everything. He left his business. He left his attitude. He left his deceitfulness. He left everything, and he followed Jesus. And Jesus immediately accepted him because he said, I want to spend time with you. And he went and ate with him. And of course, then Jesus came under fire from those who were witnessing this whole thing, saying, why does Jesus go to eat with these kind of people? And Jesus answered them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. The church is for everybody, except one kind of person. The person who says, I am perfect just the way I am. Because if a person has that idea, then the church can't offer anything to them. The church is here to offer repentance to sinners, to offer the path to salvation to those who are lost. But if you say, I'm not sinful and I'm not lost, then the church can't offer anything to you. Jesus says, come everybody. I came not to call the ones that are the best people, but the worst kind of people to come to repentance, to come to me in repentance. So that's the common denominator for everyone in the church today. We all have some work to do in our repentance and our journey toward God. But wherever you are, God says, that's okay. Wherever you are, you are here now in the temple. Come and follow me. I came not to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. <clears throat> I was talking to someone the other day in my office who was very nervous about coming to see me, somebody I actually have never met before. <clears throat> and I said to this person, I said, you are a smart person. And they said, why, why do you think I'm a smart person? You don't even know me. 
I said you're smart because you're coming here in the office to talk about your life and your faith. The dum-dums are outside. They won't come in here to talk to me. They don't, they don't have the courage or the bravery or the need for that. <clears throat> so by virtue of you coming here, you are smart. It's like the same people who go to the doctor and they're very sick. The doctor doesn't say, hey, you're really sick. The doctor says, hey, you're really smart. It's the smart people come in here and they deal with their sickness. It's the, it's the dumb ones that stay outside and say, I'm just perfect. Nobody is just perfect. We all need a doctor, just like we all need the spiritual healing that comes through the things that we're doing in our church. So the good news for everybody is that if you're sick in some way, the church is here for you. The church can offer something to you. And we're glad that you're here. And we're praying that today, whatever it is that ails your spirit, will be lifted a little bit through this divine liturgy and that over time the illnesses of, of our spirits will be healed with the spiritual healing that comes from God in our faith and through this holy church. Please stand. Again, we bow before you and we pray to you, O good and loving God.